Welcome into another edition of the Bellhaven Football Coaches Show. I'm Kenneth Nash. Joining me, as always, is head football coach Blaine McCorkle. Uh, coach, a big win this weekend. We're going to talk a lot about it, but th thanks for taking the time today. Glad to be here. The Bellhaven Blazers are coming off of a huge 70-16 to win over LaGrange. A little Friday night lights action as they played on Friday evening. A big-time conference win for the Blazers. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at some highlights from that game and then look at the, uh, the matchup on Saturday against Brevard when the Blazers head to North Carolina. They continue uh, their end-of-the-season run in the USA South. But coach, let's start with the game against LaGrange. It was a huge win for y'all. Uh, it was a game that uh, it was a little bit interesting. You were supposed to play it on Saturday. There was supposed to be some inclement weather. Decided to move it up to Friday and make sure you guys were able to get it in. And I think there were some questions as, what would that look like playing on Friday? It's a different schedule. It kind of shortens the week a little bit. And uh, first and foremost, your guys were up to the challenge. 70 points, uh, a dominant display. Can you just talk about the game and, and what you saw from your guys? Yeah, really proud of the way the guys uh, responded to a little adversity, a little change of schedule, whatever. Uh, I'm starting to think right now we're kind of built for that. We've yep. got through a lot of that <laughs> this year. I think uh, we're going into week nine and have not had a normal schedule yet yep. in nine weeks. Uh, so it's it's pretty interesting, but our guys handled it well and really proud of them. Uh, I think as we look back on the decision to move to Friday night, it was probably the right thing to do. Yep. Uh, we all saw the, the, the other game in town here with JSU and Southern had some lightning delays and yep. things like that. And um, you know, we had a soccer game here the next day that had to move around. So it was the right thing to do, and it wasn't too taxing, I don't think, on LaGrange uh, because the travel's not far. It didn't really change their travel. So glad we did it. Guys responded, and uh, now we're getting ready for the next one. Absolutely. They responded in a big way, 70 points in the game, uh, which does tie the program record for single uh, single game points. Uh, and you actually had 70 at the end of the third quarter. Uh, can you talk about uh, what it was like seeing your guys really operate uh, – at a, in a kind of a high level uh, and play fast. It was actually only a 14, uh, you only had 14 at the end of the first quarter. The second and third quarters, you absolutely ran away from LaGrange. You talked about that, those middle two quarters, what you saw on, on either end of halftime. Well, our guys played with great energy. Uh, they were really excited to play. You know, we had 14 at the end of the first quarter, as you mentioned, uh, but we took some sustainable drives, yeah. you know, especially the first one there to go down and score. The first one was, you know, seven, eight plays, whatever, to score. Uh, so that ate a little bit of clock, you know, kind of settle into the game. And then once we settled in, um, they took off and executed at a really high level in all three phases, so we were pretty proud of them for that. Um, and they showed up with an unbelievable amount of energy, which we yeah. really challenged to, them to do. Um, and they were able to maintain it throughout, so uh, it was exciting to watch. Uh, one thing that's interesting is is the the level that your offense has found this year. Um, you know, obviously you're kind of an offensive minded guy, but uh, your offense has really taken a step forward. This is now two times in the past couple of weeks uh, or past few weeks that you've put up over 600 yards of offense. You put up 400 or more yards, or almost 400 yards on the ground, and you put up almost 500 a couple weeks ago. Uh, your offense is not just performing at a high level, but it's performing at at one of the best in the country, really, uh, a level that's one of the best in the country. Can you talk about the offense and just the continued strides they've made this year? Well, we've been in it for a few years now, so yeah. the guys understand it. They know what we're trying to do. Um, I think our offensive staff uh, as a whole does a good job game planning and uh, finding things that uh, fit our system, and we can tweak them a little bit week to week and do things, but we just try to keep things simple. You know, if you really truly break down our offense, there's just a few concepts here and there that we may tweak from week to week, but we don't try to out-coach ourselves, out-guru ourselves. We just pl try to play uh, good, simple, sound football, take care of the football, try to limit our penalties, um, and the guys are buying in and executing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been fun to watch it grow and develop and become as explosive as it has. You know, I think uh, going into three weeks ago, uh, the school rushing record had stood for 10 years, yep. and now in theory we've broken that 10-year record three weeks in a row. Yep. You know, So we're doing some, uh, some things really well, and Hopefully we can continue these last couple weeks. It's been really impressive. And then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, one thing that your defense has done really well is, is limit kind of quick uh, explosive drives out of the other team. They've done really well early in the game, getting quick stops, getting the ball back to the offense. Um, we know how talented this defensive group is, uh, but they seem to have, as the offense has leveled up a little bit, they've leveled up and, and they're holding teams under 20 points a game over the past couple of weeks. Uh, they've got a, sh a shutout in there. Uh, it's just been really impressive all around. Can you talk about the defense and, and kind of how they've been able to, to kind of really just get the ball to the offense, let the offense go score, and it's been a really nice cycle to watch. Yeah, complimentary football. Yeah. We talked about a lot here. And uh, you know, our defense is probably performing as at a, a high of a level as in my five years here. Um, you know, I think going into the fourth quarter the other day, LaGrange had eight yards rushing. Yep. You know, then they popped off one 65-yarder there at the end of the game against our threes and fours, which is not good and unacceptable. Yeah. But looking at the big picture, 
Um, we did some really good things. You yeah. know, I think we had held them to like 221 overall. Yeah. Uh, and again, 65 of that was on one play, yeah. basically the last play of the game. So uh, they're doing some things really well. They're fast, they're physical, and, and same thing. They've been in the system for a few years now and they know what to do and they're starting to understand things uh, conceptually and not just by assignment and by rule. And when you can start understanding in all three phases conceptually what you're doing, that's when you can really grow. It's been really impressive to watch. Real quick before we get into the highlights, I want to look at two players uh, that, that uh, put together some record-breaking performances, or at least uh, over the season have. Uh, first, Constantine Hansis, your place kicker. Uh, in this game, he, he had 10 extra points, uh, which does tie a program record for most extra points in a single game. Uh, but he did also uh, break his own record for single-season PATs. Uh, one thing that you've talked about is how consistent he is, and, and you believe that he's uh, he's going to finish his career as one of the all-time scorers for Belhaven, uh, just because so automatic. Can you talk about his season? Uh, he's now got 40 plus PATs, broke his own record from a year ago, and as a sophomore uh, he's rapidly ascending the list of, of great place kickers here at Bellhaven. Yeah, he really is. We're really proud of Beans and what he's done and what he's brought to our program. He's a fun guy. Everybody likes him. Everybody likes to be around him and he is on game day as consistent as anybody. You know, He set that record as a freshman last year um, in a 10-game season where prior in the NAI years there were all 11-game seasons. Mm -hmm. So that was impressive in itself and now he did it in week 8 this year, uh, so every one he kicks the rest of the year is a new record, yep. you know, which is pretty cool. Uh, and hopefully we got two more games. Hopefully we score a few more touchdowns so he can keep adding to it. And that's one thing I challenged him with uh, as a freshman a year ago when we knew he was going to be our guys. Like, look, if you're a four-year starting kicker, you need to leave here, the all-time leading scorer in school history. Mm -hmm. And I think he kind of took that to heart, and uh, hopefully we'll look up in two years, and that's exactly what he's done. Yeah, he's raising the bar for himself. He's going to have his work cut out for him next year because he's approaching 50, and he's still got a couple of weeks to go. And then Colby Blunt, who we've talked about a lot, uh, he had two rushing touchdowns in this game. That makes him the single-season rushing touchdowns leader. He's just a couple of shy of becoming the all-time rushing touchdowns leader here at Bellhaven. Uh, he's been really impressive, but these past three weeks, he's had three, uh, three straight weeks of multiple rushing touchdowns. He's got nine across three weeks. Uh, he's been incredible. He's not even having to run the ball a whole lot. You're talking 12 to 16-ish carries over the past few weeks, uh, but he's explosive. The offensive lines looked really good in front of him, and he's putting up record numbers. Yeah, I think he had this week 13 carries for like 138 yards, something like that. A week ago, he had 14 carries for like 174. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty good average. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, he's leading the conference in rushing right now, but he is significantly lower on the number of carries, yeah. which speaks even greater volume to the type of talent he is and what he's bringing to our offense. Uh, like you said, I think he's got two touchdowns to break the all-time rushing I think, yep. touchdown record yep. as a junior. That's with incredible. still another year to go. Uh, I think he's got 44 yards to get to 1,000 mm -hmm. on the year, maybe 36. I think it's 36 yards to get to 1,000 on the year and about 170 to break the single-season rushing record, which are very well within reach. Uh, and, again, he's just a junior. So uh, pretty exciting to watch him play. And uh, with the limited number of carries, I mean, I can only imagine if he played a full four-quarter game where we would be right now. Yeah, he's, he really is. Uh, he's going to break a couple more records for this year. He is just a few yards shy or a few carries shy with how, how much uh, ground he covers each carry of becoming just the third 1,000-yard rusher in Bellhaven history. Johnny Horn did it twice, and then Bradley Foley did it, uh, did it last year. So uh, an incredible year by Colby. Let's go ahead and look at the highlights. There's plenty of them this week. It's been a lot, to, uh, a, big, a big, nice, long stretch of just plenty of highlights to look at. But we we start here on offense. K.J. Hickman, uh, right on the sideline, makes a nice catch, spins back inside, and this was the first score of the game. Yeah, I had a nice drive going here. I uh, ran a little uh, naked boot here, and K.J. does a good job just finding himself in that void, knowing where he is on the field, that he doesn't want to run out of the back of the end zone, settling down, and Tim finds him, and good job by K.J. just uh, getting himself vertical in the end zone to start off 7 to nothing after a pretty good drive. Yeah, it was a great start for the Blazers. Uh, another touchdown would come quickly. This time, Jacoby James Grace, uh, just a seam right route right, right up the middle. Uh, a nice throw by Tim uh, Tim Johnson, and, and this was really kind of set you guys on your way. Yeah, a good seam right route here with the dig behind it. We've gotten this bunch set a few times this year, mostly to run the ball, so we haven't thrown out of it much, so we wanted to make sure we did that. Uh, got in that fringe area right before the red zone. It was second short, so good time to take a shot there. And uh, Tim throws a perfect ball there to Jacoby James Grace. We've mentioned him a few times here the last yep. few weeks, growing as a blocker and making some plays. And it's been neat to watch him develop uh, throughout the course of the year. 
Yeah, that would put you guys up 14 0. The offense was cooking all night long. Uh, here's Devin Daniels, one of your running backs, with a nice 29 yard reception, uh, touchdown reception. Uh, and he absolutely just runs a guy over in the end zone. Yeah, he does. Good play on the slow screen here by Devin. Uh, Raz is in there at quarterback. A lot of times when Raz goes in, people expect him to run, so we want to make sure we got him a couple of tosses. And really good blocking out front. You see Cole McAlpin and Cole Gaddy and uh, David Turner there leading the way. He didn't really need them. He kind of became his own blocker <laughs> right there and ran through that guy on the goal line there. So, uh, good play to put us up. Uh, 21 to nothing there early in the second quarter. Yeah, and you want to talk about a guy who's uh, going to pop up pretty much everywhere on tape. Raz Pace is that guy. You saw him just throw a touchdown pass to Devin Daniels. Here he's blocking a punt uh, on punt coverage. He does a little bit of everything for you. We've talked about it all year, but a great play, great athleticism to set you up with good field position. Yeah, good play by Raz. Coach Vaughn does a good job every week kind of scheming up our, our punt rushes and finding the holes in it and was able to get Raz free uh, to block this thing here. And then uh, I think Christian Lewis recovered it. Mm -hmm. So you see Raz is pretty fired up coming off the field there. But he did. He blocked the punt. He threw two touchdown passes. Uh, he threw a block on a kickoff return that was devastating. Yeah. He had the whole crowd fired up. Uh, and we talked about all of Constantine Hansis's 10 extra points a minute ago. Well, he held all 10 of them. Yeah. So uh, he's a football player. There's no doubt, and there's, there's not many jobs out there you can't do. It's really impressive to see what Raz does every week. Every week it's something new with him. Uh, here's your fullback getting on the action. We talk about Bogan Brewer uh, frequently on this show because uh, he does a lot of the dirty work uh, and he's fun to watch. Here he is. You don't see many fullbacks with, with 10 plus yard receptions, uh, but it's a great throw by Tim. Bogan goes up and gets it for another score. Yeah, this play was set up really off the first play of the game, uh, which we ran a couple times before that, which was just a little fullback lead uh, there in the B gap. We got down in the red zone, tweaked the formation a little bit to move a safety out of the box. Uh, but to the linebackers in there, it's the same look, and he was able to to slip by the guys expecting to take on the block and uh, get him open there going to the end zone. And I'm uh, pretty excited about his vertical there, too. That's pretty good to see him get up. But uh, Bogan is another one that is a, a team favorite, and everybody gets excited to see Bogan make a play. We spent a lot of the year talking about how deep your running back core is. Uh, Deontay Gallishaw, one of those players who really is a, an electric runner when he's got the ball in his hands. Uh, nice 32-yard run here. He goes left and then uh, sees a hole and able to come back right with it as he gets downfield. Yeah, great run by Deontay here. And, and him and Devin and C.J. Jackson and that whole room, um, I give those guys a lot of credit because Colby – Obviously, kind of is, is the show and, and the big man, but he's still only getting 13, 14 carries. But every time these guys get in the game, they take advantage of it. And, you know, I don't think we uh, drop off much at all, regardless of who's in there carrying the ball. So nice play there by Deontay uh, to get us down close to set up the next score. Yeah, and this would set up Tim Johnson, a quarterback keeper, designed run here. Uh, really great blocking in front of him. He takes it, and he had four touchdowns on the day, three passing, one rushing. Uh, a great night for Tim Johnson. Yeah, good run by Tim. Last couple of weeks, he's really coming into his own as a runner. Uh, one thing that's fun to watch on this play is that the block on the edge by Brooks Brommer and, and Kendry and Boatman. Uh, Kendry and just wears that guy out, and then Brooks pops up to the next level. Uh, our in-house player of the games, we had co-offensive player of the games this week with Tim. He had one of his best performances, and the other one was Kendry and Boatman. He, yeah. We had to go back and watch the film pretty thorough to find a minus. I mean, he yeah. was really, really dominant, uh, and you can see it there. And there's two or three plays in there where he's just taking guys 10, 15 yards downfield and dropping them. So a uh, fun night there for, for Big Boat. Yeah, if people play, pay close attention, your offensive line is really incredible to watch. And not just the starting five. You can go six, seven, eight deep on that offensive line, and there's a lot of talent there. Let's go to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, this was a great play. Uh, Cody McCraney, uh, Eli Webb, just really tracking this play well, coming from opposite sides of the defensive line and making a nice play. Yeah, these two guys are, are really putting together good years. Uh, Eli, we've talked a lot about uh, just as an outstanding freshman talent who's going to be here for a long time. And then Cody McCraney, wild man, we call him. Uh, really, as we've talked about, been a journeyman, just moved to defensive line this year and has really stepped up to the challenge and, and making a lot of plays. We'll see him make another play here in the highlights in a little while, I think. <clears throat> and he actually was our defensive player of the game in-house. Yeah. Um, had a really nice stat line, but just the, the energy and intensity and the emotion he brings to the team is, is really unmatched. He's also on our extra point team. We talked about it yeah. a minute ago. And if you watch the film, you see he comes off after protecting an extra point like we won the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, just He loves football. He loves playing. And um, really excited for him. Love to see lots of energy from everybody on the field. Uh, here's a touchdown run by Kobe Blunt. This would tie the single season touchdown record, uh, a 10 yard run. And, and when you guys got close to the end zone, uh, it felt like a virtual guarantee this this week that you were going to be able to punch it in. Everybody doing their job really well. Yeah, nice blocking all the way across the board. We've gotten some heavy personnel here uh, <clears throat> after a big play. We saw Bogan catch the touchdown pass a minute ago, but this is what Bogan's built to do is just kind of lead the way uh, for the touchdowns on the edge. Nice. A block there to, to wad it up and, and get Colby to the edge to score. 
Yeah, it was a great run by Colby. Uh, as mentioned, that was the, the record tire. We'll see the record breaker here in just a second. Uh, Eli Webb, back to Eli Webb. Uh, we talked about how incredible of a, of a rookie campaign he's putting together. Uh, he blows up the quarterback. There's no way to put it uh, any uh, any other way. He blows up the quarterback. Yeah, he, he's explosive. He gets there in a hurry, and he does some damage when he gets there. Yeah. And uh, he, he hits this guy as solid as you can hit him. And a big play by the freshman defensive lineman here uh, from over at Fairhope. You know, we saw him last week. Uh, do the same thing to the quarterback from Southern Virginia, and he just bounced off the ground. You know, and he's a uh, he's a fun one for sure. An impressive play by Eli Webb. Devin Daniels, uh, he already had a receiving touchdown in this game. Uh, he had a great night on the ground as well. Here's a nice play by Devin, a 20 20 yard uh, touchdown scam. Yep, Devin, phenomenal football player. I think he was, as you mentioned, 108 on the night. Um, had a great job, did a great job running the ball. Physical runner, downhill runner. Does a lot of things in special teams, as we mentioned too. Um, but open up the hole and really just breaks the ankles of the free safety there who doesn't have a chance and puts it in the end zone. Yeah, it was a great run by Devin. Uh, a nice little shake and bake at the end there. Uh, we flip back to defense, a little back and forth here. Josiah Raymond with a big pick here. Uh, quarterback throws probably a little bit of an ill-advised pass, a lot of coverage there. But Josiah reads it really well, comes back across the field, makes the interception. Yeah, Joe is, is one of those guys that's just a uh, steady, every day, comes to work, just stoic, tough football player. Uh, excited. I think this is his first pick of his career. Hopefully he's got a lot more to come. Uh, but this was right before the half. They were trying to mount a drive there before the half, get a little momentum, and, and Joe was able to get the pick and kind of end that. So uh, good play there by Josiah. Yeah, it was a great pick. The defense uh, really came up with plays. When when it seemed like LaGrange was going to get a little momentum, the defense came up with plays to kind of snuff that out uh, in a hurry. Cooper Tullo is a guy that's popped up on your highlight reel uh, pretty much week after week. Uh, here he is in the slot, uh, just finds the open space across the middle, uh, and Tim Johnson hits him in stride for a big game. Yeah, nice play by Cooper. I thought for a second he was going to spring this thing and score. They were able to track him down, but uh, does a good job securing our punts on our punt return, taking care of the ball, and uh, exciting little player to watch there. Yeah, it was a great play by Cooper, 40-yard reception. Uh, that would help set up what would be the record-breaking touchdown for Colby Blunt, most rushing touchdowns in a single season, this time six yards out. Uh, some great blocking once again, and uh, Colby Blunt doing what he does best, and that's run the football into the end zone. Yep, exact same play, the exact same side. We saw him score a minute ago. This is kind of a staple play for us. Uh, makes a good cut inside there behind some good blocking, and, and that's the record-breaker, and we were, we were pretty excited for him uh, to get that done. Yeah, it's really impressive, as we mentioned earlier in the show. He's he's probably got some more records to try to break uh, before the end of the season. This is Deontay Gallishaw, who uh, had a really good game as well. You, you ran the ball really well for really like you have all season, but for a third straight week, really dominant run game. Uh, Deontay Gallishaw breaks free here and uh, a big score. Yeah, good hard play action here. We get Deontay up the seam. Uh, Raz back in at quarterback, as we mentioned, he's run the ball a lot, so it's important for us to get him a few throws as we can just to break some tendencies. I think Deontay caught that one three times, uh, but wide open there, good ball by Raz, uh, and good to see Deontay get a touchdown there uh, in the third quarter. Yeah, running game really set up a lot of what you wanted to do on offense really well. Uh, here's one of your freshmen, uh, Karius Hodgen, uh, making a really nice play here, getting uh, just getting free on the edge and coming in and making a nice sack uh, coming off uh, on, a, on a DB blitz. Yeah, we mentioned a couple times on the show in past weeks the talent in our freshman secondary unit, and Ice is one of those guys. Um, he's going to be a really, really good player here. He came in, he had a great preseason. He's been steady all the way along. Uh, really good to see the game get in a situation where him and a lot of other guys can get in there and, and make a play. And uh, he's explosive and plays with a lot of energy and, and uh, got a great future here. Yeah, it was a really impressive play. You were able to get your twos and threes in uh, once again for, for a lot of the second half. Uh, Landry Huddleston's a freshman we've talked about a lot. Cooper Martin uh, has been around this program for a little bit, but uh, he makes a lot of plays. Uh, great depth on your defensive line. They combine here to, to get the sack and the forced fumble and recovered by Cooper Martin. That's right. Yeah, good, good to see Landry get there and make a play. Um, intense, exciting young Mike linebacker. You know, Connor Fordham will graduate this year. We'll all hate to see him leave. Uh, but I think that spot's going to be in good hands there with Landry uh, for a long time. Physical, explosive player. Wyatt Beck, another freshman linebacker in there right behind him. We've talked about him before on the show as well. Uh, so the future is pretty good with that young defensive group. So it's a lot of freshmen making plays. Yeah, it's tough on a quarterback when uh, there's pressure coming from his left, right, and right up the middle. Uh, a nice play there. Devin Daniels had a couple of touchdowns in this game. Uh, here he is, 15-yard touchdown run. Uh, a great play. You see Ben Owens on quarterback. This is a lot of your twos and threes offensively as well uh, who continue to hold that really high standard. Yeah, very next play after the fumble that was forced right there. This was a one-play drive for a touchdown, so nice run by Devin here. Uh, good blocking here by our second offensive line again there. A couple starters mixed in there with him as we were kind of piecing it together as we were going there about halfway through the third quarter. Uh, but Devin, again, same guy there. I don't think that guy wants to tackle Devin. He's missed <laughs> him twice now uh, on his way to the end zone. So nice run there by Devin. 
uh, for the final score of the day to put it at 70. And that's one we really didn't have any desire to score after that. You know, yeah. That's plenty. You yeah. know, when you're halfway through the third quarter, um, we don't, we don't want to take it any farther than that. But uh, when it's one play and your twos and threes are in there, sometimes those things get away from you a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, defensively, uh, they continue to hold a pretty high standard at the end of the game. Cody McCraney pops up once again. Uh, a really nice sack here, and you love to see the celebration after. Really fired That's up right. about it. Yeah, yeah. Good to see him do that. And as I mentioned a minute ago, he was our player of the game on defense in-house. And just an exciting play for him uh, to make a sack. And you can see there he's got a lot of passion and energy when he plays the game. And he, he plays it for the right reasons, no doubt. Really cool to see that. And then uh, we wrap things up with Caleb Gallishaw, uh, who hasn't seen tons and tons of time this year, but he's a freshman running back y'all are excited about. Uh, great blocking, uh, a great hole he hits it, and he picks up a, a nice 25-yard gain. Yeah, there's a lot of guys in here in this clip that don't see a lot of action. You know, we've mentioned before on our away games, we have a different travel roster. We'll dress around 90 at home and around 60 on the road. So a lot of the guys you see in this clip don't travel. So when we play at home, you kind of want to get to your threes faster than your twos yeah. because you know when you travel the next week or week before, your twos are going to have to finish the game. So any chance we can get to get these guys in uh, in those home games, we're going to do it. Caleb, brother of Deontay Galishaw, who we've seen a couple highlights for before, um, nice to see him get a 20-plus yard run there um, behind some good young offensive linemen there. Uh, that kind of wrapped up and, and put a, uh, a bow on what was a really, really impressive game. You're now 7-1 and one this season, 5-1 uh, and one in USA South play. 7-1, uh, seven, and one, seven wins ties what, uh, what was the, the single game, or probably single season win record for Bellhaven. It's happened three other occasions, 1999, 2006, 2021. Last year, obviously, if my memory, ser uh, memory serves me correctly. Um, to get to this point in the season, already have seven wins. You know that there's still a lot of football in front of you. There's still not a lot of um, opportunity for success and, and for new records and for new standards to be set. Um, what does that mean for you as a coach? Because last year was great. Uh, it was the highest win percentage in Bellhaven history. Uh, you guys are on pace to really um, bl even blow that out of the water, to see the strides continue. Uh, what does that do for you as a coach? And does that just really uh, give you the drive to see these guys are buying in and we're continuing to succeed? It does. It's exciting. And it does show the, the buy-in. It shows the growth of the program. Uh, I think one thing that it shows, having done that last year as the best season in school history, and now at worst tying that this year, yeah. um, it shows that it's sustainable. You, yeah. know, you see a lot of programs get turned around and they're kind of a flash in the pan and gone, but that's not what we want to be. We want to be a sustained program of prominence, you know, and, you know, a win this week will give us eight. That's, yep. that's never happened in school history. Uh, we're excited about that. Those things are fun, um, but those are things you have to kind of reflect on and, and recognize once they're over. Yep. Because before then, you've got a game to get ready for against a really, really good and talented Brevard team that if you don't handle your business, those things aren't going to happen and they're just, just talk. So uh, a lot of work to do this week before we get there. Yeah, you mentioned Brevard. Uh, really, you've got two games left and they're against two really good football teams. Brevard this weekend in North Carolina, then Maryville at home. They're the third and fourth teams in the conference standings uh, as they sit right now. So two really good football Football teams winning records in conference. Um, let's talk about Brevard a little bit uh, because they're a team that I think when we all saw the schedule at the beginning of the year and kind of looked through and said, okay, where are the kind of the key matchups? Brevard was one. They've been a good team in this conference for a long time. First time you will have seen them, first time they'll have seen you. Uh, they want to play spoiler. They know that you guys are riding a hot streak, um, but they don't, you know, the old guard doesn't want to let it down uh, or yeah. let it go that quickly. Uh, can you talk about what you expect from Brevard uh, going into this weekend? Well, they're on a bit of a hot streak, too. You know, yeah. They've won four of the last five. That one loss coming to Huntington, who's who's leading the way right now in kind of the standard in conference. So uh, they're a good football team, you know, and they're they're extremely well coached. They've got a great staff with a lot of experience. Uh, Coach Kyatt, as you mentioned, uh, interesting about him, a lot of Mississippi connections. His yeah. uncle was Robert Kyatt, the, the chancellor at Ole Miss, and played football there. And uh, I think his father's got a lot of Mississippi connections in the Tulane Hall of Fame and uh, coached down the Gulf Coast a bit, stuff like that. So uh, they'll be excited and ready to play. They're a good football team. Um, they got a good environment to play in. We're traveling up in the mountains. Leagues yep. will be changing. So hopefully our guys focus on the game and not the scenery. Uh, but we're excited to go play, and it'll be a big challenge uh, this week and next week as well. I'm curious. We've I've asked this question pretty much every week, but you, your team is really at a standard and a high that, that a lot of these players, whether they've been here for four or five years, whether they're in their first year, not necessarily seen. Um, Seventy to sixteen. There's no way other way to put it. That doesn't really happen here at Bellhaven very often. Now you're going and taking on teams that, that frankly, uh, I don't know that you can expect to beat Brevard by 50 points or, or Maryville by 50 points. How do you get them ready for, for what is going to be probably a little bit of a tougher test against teams that are established uh, successful programs? Well, I think they can get to 70 against LaGrange, 59 against Greensboro, 40 against whoever, uh, because 
they have a standard, yeah. you know, and they show up ready to play. They show up to play for four quarters, and then they let us kind of control those things. So I don't think them – they've kind of proven that them getting ready to play regardless of opponent doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't think they'll have this issue this week because when they turn on the tape and they see the record and they see the scores, they know they're playing a good football team. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe one of the concerns is they haven't played four quarters in a while, yeah. you know, and that's something that we've got to be ready for from a, a conditioning and mindset standpoint is – this will be a four-quarter football game, yeah. you know, and we've got to be ready for that. So um, I don't think there is any concern about a lull from these guys as far as that goes. Uh, you mentioned you know, haven't played four quarters in a while, and that's something we've talked about uh, is that because of the situation you've been in, you've been able to get some of your, your, your younger guys, some of your guys that are maybe a tick, or lower, a tick lower on the depth chart, you know, significant playing time. So while your ones maybe have not played a full four quarters, uh, do you see a lot of value in the fact that, that your depth has played a lot of time? So if you get to Brevard and, hey, it's not working late in the third quarter and you need to change a pace, uh, you've got guys who have seen a lot of snaps over the past couple of weeks, even if they're maybe not be uh, the number one guy on the depth chart. Oh, 100%. And that's the beauty of playing a lot of guys in those. You know, it is a little bit of a double-edged sword that – when you play guys early, you are growing and build, de developing your depth for the future, but you're also doing it for the immediate because, you know, anybody can go down at any time and it's next man up. And when that's, it's time for that next guy to step up, you don't want that to be the first time he's seen live action, yeah. you know. So um, you get a lot of good out of it. And then the negative being, as I mentioned, you know, the starters haven't played four quarters in a while. So the yeah. conditioning aspect and things like that. So um, it's more good than, than not. Um, and we're always going to give guys a chance to play because, one, we're building long term. And, two, if something happens this year, we want them ready to go. One more question. This was a surprise when I was thinking about this as we started the show. Uh, looking at the numbers uh, after this past week, one thing that stood out is how dominant you've been in the second quarter this year. Yeah. Uh, you're outscoring opposition by well over 100 points in the second quarter alone this season. Uh, do you think that there's anything to that, is, or is it just we're playing good football and it just happens to be the second quarter where we're scoring a lot of points and holding them to uh, not very many? Well, we talk to our guys a lot about you know kind of building as you go. You know, make every play better than the one before. Yeah. You know, one of our themes the last few weeks has been, has been constant, continual improvement. You know, because we don't know if we have two weeks left in the season or seven weeks left in yeah. the season. But whenever that last game is, we use Connor Fordham as an example. He's one of the best players on our football team probably one of the best linebackers in this conference, and he's a fifth-year senior. Um, how much better can he get? I don't know, but whenever he plays his last play of football for Belhaven, he needs to be the best football player at that moment he's yeah. ever been. So I think that's something that our guys buy into, and once they get in the flow of the game, they just kind of keep building and growing and working to play better as they go, and that's part of it. And then, fortunately, the last few weeks, by the end of the second quarter, the game's kind of decided. Yeah, it's been really interesting to watch because you go back to Friday. It was 14-3 in the first quarter. It still felt like there was a lot of game left, and then you put up 35 in the second quarter, uh, and it was you were up five, by four by that point and that kind of put the game away and that's kind of in the theme the past couple of weeks so it was just an interesting question that really frankly for my personal uh, information was curious about um, but Brevard coming up this weekend you've obviously got Maryville in a couple of weeks um, as we wrap up just finishing the season against two tough teams uh, does that excite you as a coach to really get a great evaluation of we can finish the season with uh, with the best season in program history and do it beating two really good conference opponents. Yeah, it does. Uh, because as I mentioned, you want to be playing your best football at the end of the year. So let's do it against the best teams that we can play against. Yep. Um, and if we handle our business and play them well, um, and a few things fall our way and we get an 11th game, we want to be battle tested and ready yep. to go when that 11th game comes. Um, obviously, some of that right now is out of our hands. We can just control what we can control and try to win these next two, starting with Brevard. Um, but if that time and that opportunity comes, uh, we'll be ready and playing better teams definitely help you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully there will be an 11th game to be played. Uh, certainly deserving top five offense in the country. Uh, you've been in the AFCA poll. We expect for a third straight week this week, uh, receiving votes fourth time this season. Uh, you've really put together an impressive campaign. Brevard, North Carolina, 12 p.m. kickoff. Uh, make sure to tune in if you're in the North Carolina area. I know we've uh, you've had some alums up there uh, that have made the trip when you've gone up there earlier this season. Make sure to go check it out. Uh, something special brewing here in Jackson. Jackson, and uh, it's not over yet. Coach, thanks for taking the time, uh, and good luck this weekend. Thank you.